Jakarta is Southeast Asia's biggest capital, and it is also the world's fastest sinking city. It's pretty shocking that the city is still holding up even after being hit by an endemic, severe flooding, overpopulation, and now the worst climate crisis. But the Indonesian government has a solution, building a new capital from scratch. The soon-to-be capital Nusantara boasts a utopian city which will run on green energy. In today's video, we will dive into all the interesting facts about this upcoming megacity. Indonesia's proposed new capital is located in East Kalimantan on the island of Borneo. Nusantara, which translates to archipelago in Javanese, is a reflection of the nation's expanding aspirations for economic and strategic power projection. The move will cost an estimated $35 billion, and Nusantara is expected to be home to almost 2 million residents by 2045. It is hoped that local and global talent will be enticed to take up residence there. This will be one of the biggest infrastructure projects the Indonesian government has ever undertaken. But why is Indonesia building a capital from scratch? Relocating a capital city is not undertaken lightly, but Indonesia has no other option. Its current capital Jakarta is quite literally sinking. The city is home to more than 11 million residents, but frequently swells to 30 million. Overpopulation is not the only issue. Jakarta is built on a delta system of 13 rivers. Currently, a startling 40% of the city is submerged. Since the city is so densely populated, water cannot seep into the soil. As a result, flooding is a persistent issue that will get worse due to climate change, population growth, and deteriorating infrastructure. Because of traffic congestion and flooding, Jakarta loses about $6 billion in productivity each year. The Indonesian government wants to relieve some of the pressure on Jakarta by constructing a new capital. Meanwhile, 60% of Indonesia's GDP is concentrated on Java, with Jakarta contributing to one-fifth of Indonesia's GDP. The regions of Kalimantan contribute less than 10% to the total GDP. This is despite the provinces having an abundance of commodities such as coal, gold, and oil. Because most of the country's wealth is concentrated in Jakarta and many Indonesians living outside Java have long complained about being forgotten. By relocating the capital to East Kalimantan, the government hopes the move will encourage greater investments to Indonesia's outer-lying provinces, resulting in more inclusivity and development. Serious conversations about moving Indonesia's capital had been going on for some time, but it was not until 2021 that a master plan was developed. The plan to move Indonesia's capital has been suggested by Indonesia's first president Sukarno in 1957. But this plan was abandoned, and Jakarta was declared the country's capital during the 1960s. The idea of building a new capital 800 miles away on the island of Borneo was first proposed in 2019. The plan was announced by President Joko Widodo. He stated that the relocation of the new capital was to address economic inequality in Indonesia and to relieve the burden on Jakarta and the island of Java where it is located. Soon after, the Indonesian parliament passed a law enabling the proposed relocation. It's intriguing that East Kalimantan was chosen as the new capital. It has been argued that the move was motivated by geographic circumstances, such as the area's location in the middle of the Indonesian archipelago and the fact that it is unaffected by the natural disasters that frequently plague Indonesia, such as earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and tsunamis. Only 3.7 million people live in the mineral-rich East Kalimantan, which is known for its jungles and orangutan population. Strategically, shifting its capital to East Kalimantan will position Indonesia closer to areas of most interest, namely the Celebes Sea, Arafura Sea, and the Pacific Ocean. It is no secret that Indonesia aims to position itself as a dynamic Indo-Pacific power exploiting its formidable centrally located position. 
The country's objective to become maritime power in the region is made very clear. It's difficult to comprehend the sheer scale of building a new capital. The new administrative center of Indonesia will be built over an area of inland forest that is more than 200,000 hectares, or nearly three times the size of New York City. After the Indonesian parliament approved the relocation, in August 2022, the first shovel of earth was turned over at the site of the new capital. The first priority has been the construction of a toll road, the Sepakaring Road, which is the main access road to Nusantara. According to reports, this road is currently 80% finished. The acquisition of land and the creation of a comprehensive engineering plan are additional priorities during this first phase, which runs from 2022 to 2024. This initial phase of infrastructure has received $350 million from the Indonesian Public Works and Public Housing Ministry. Nusantara will require soft and hard infrastructure, such as for the development of urban utilities, toll manufacturing, seaports and airports, and network and communications, among others. This will be achieved gradually, starting from the presidential palace, the central government headquarters, housing districts for government workers, and the headquarters for the military and police personnel. There are lofty goals for the new capital, including promoting economic equality and inclusivity. Nusantara aims to derive 100% of its energy from renewable sources and ensuring 80% of mobility is by public transport, cycling, or walking. The government intends to transform the new capital into a low-carbon superhub that will support healthcare and technology sectors, as well as promote sustainable growth beyond the island of Java. In other words, Nusantara will be a smart city, which encompasses information, communication, and technology to improve operational efficiencies and provide a better quality of government services. The new capital needs major investment for its development and this presents ample opportunities for foreign businesses. The Indonesian government will provide slightly under 60% of the $35 billion needed for construction, with the remaining funds coming from the private sector. Strangely, although city planners have emphasized that they wish to avoid problems brought on by private investment, such as inequality and corruption, they will be dependent on it to raise the money necessary to build the city. Project Nuzantara is still at an initial stage, marred by delays including the COVID-19 pandemic. With such ambitious goals for the new capital, bringing them to fruition seems to some an impossible endeavor. For instance, the government would like to move its presidential palace and other offices to the new capital in early 2024, yet construction has barely begun. When Japanese investors visited the construction site in late June 2022, it is reported that they were puzzled because they barely saw anything aside from trees and a white sign with the words Nuzantara Ground Zero. Soon after, they withdrew their funding saying the project lacked a proper vision. With Japan's withdrawal, the country is reported to be turning to the Middle East nations, including Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates as well as China. The proposed site of the new capital is not far from the Mahakam Lakes, a beautiful area rich in peatlands and home to the Irrawaddy dolphin, an endangered species. Peatland fires are the most significant source of the acrid haze that regularly envelop various parts of Indonesia. Therefore, the risk of fire in the area is very real. There is also concern from environmental groups about endangered species in the area. Kalimantan is one of the few places on Earth where orangutans live in their natural habitat. Critics have argued that the construction of the new city will lead to the expansion of palm oil plantations and logging in an area rich in diverse wildlife and lush rainforests. Groups representing the indigenous people of Borneo have also voiced their concerns, saying that their environment and culture could be endangered by the move. Indigenous groups worry the government will destroy their villages. Given that the government does not acknowledge ancestral land claims, there is no legal mechanism for indigenous landowners to be compensated. 
Indonesia is not the first country to change its capital. Brazil, Pakistan, and Nigeria have all changed theirs to newly planned and constructed cities. Egypt is currently building a massive new capital city to take the burden off the overpopulated Cairo. The success rate of building a new capital from scratch has been very low so far. For example, Brasilia brought in more segregation, and Myanmar's Naypyidaw is abandoned and looks like a ghost city now. Although Nigeria's Abuja quickened its urbanization, it couldn't put up an affordable housing plan for its people, so it ended up creating more slums. Above all else, in 1911, British Raj made Delhi India's new capital, changing it from Calcutta. Today the city ranks at the top for the world's worst air pollution. In the future, it is likely that many countries will jump on the bandwagon and construct new capitals to ease their presently overflowing capital cities. So Nuzantara could be a case study for other countries planning to shift capitals, and this could be to find solutions or to learn lessons. Let us know your thoughts on this project in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.